Is it fucking work? Okay. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 141, 42 of the Speared Sunnies podcast. I'm your host, Angry Cunt, and uh, I'm hot. I'm so hot in this fucking warehouse, dude. It's still jeans of 2019. I have not faulted. Don't worry. Oh, but it's getting worse, man. You know what? It's not as hot as it was yesterday. I was in here all day yesterday. All day. It was fucking 37 degrees. And uh, if you're an American cunt who uses Fahrenheit, uh, don't. <laughs> I'm not going to... I'm not Work it out yourself. Get you, Google it. You fat fuck. Hey? What do you use Fahrenheit for? It doesn't make any sense. Celsius. Zero. Cold. 100 degrees. Boiling. You don't need anything else. What is this fucking Fahrenheit shit? Whenever I go, oh, it's so hot. It's bloody 37 degrees. All these Fahrenheit fuckheads go, oh, 37 degrees is actually really cold. Hey. Hey. America. Your measuring system temperature system everything fucking system is retarded fix it stop you are wrong the rest of the world is right i know you live in the land of the free the home of the brave oh say can you see how far away that thing is do do you mean in like centimeters or inches or yards yards (laughs) because i can't help you Oh man, this fucking fan is swinging, and I can turn the swinging off, but I gotta wait until it points at me. Here we go. Oh, it just went to the... It was pointing away. It's the wrong way. It's coming back now. It's coming back. It's coming back. Here we go. Almost there. Fucking do it! Oh, it didn't do it. Oh, I pressed the wrong button. Okay. (laughs) It's coming back. It's good. Oh, fuck, man. I'm going to stand up and do it. Welcome to Spearhead Sundays. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and I'm yelling at fans. I'm going to do this. Fucking. Ah, there we go. Dude, what's the point of having a fucking remote if you have to stand up and go near the thing to fucking work it? It's like, oh, hey, this is our, our, uh, this is our remote. you got to stand right next to it and push the fucking remote up against the thing. Oh, why don't we just have buttons? Nah, I reckon we'll have the remote, eh, just so they can have another fucking thing they need to not lose. Um, I'm so hot. This is going to be an incoherent, raging one, guys. And I hope, and that's what, I know that's what you're here for. I had some cunt comment on the last episode of the podcast. No one watches these. Give it up. Hey, dude. No one will ever in your life Ever watch, listen, read, pay attention, or care about a single thing you ever do in your life. Right now, this very moment, where thousands of people are listening and watching to this podcast, this is the most that your opinion will ever be heard. And we all think you're a fuckhead. (laughs) Who does that? Who goes onto a thing and goes, Oh, no one watches this. Give it up. It's like, dude, you obviously don't want to watch it. You can see the fucking counter thing. There's a couple thousand people that watch it on YouTube. It's about three times that amount that listen to the audio version because they've got a brain in their head and they know what a podcast actually is. I I never got that. People going out of their way to be fucking negative. G'day, cunts. Welcome to Lou Review. Today we're looking at the... (laughs) But it's different. I'm creating a fucking video to entertain cunts. That dude just being a douchebag for no reason. And you know what? Didn't affect me at all. Didn't affect my self-esteem. I was like, I'm just going to fucking rant about this dumb fuckhead on my podcast that nobody listens to. Hey, dickhead. You're a dickhead. Oh, what have I done this week? I, Luke just left the warehouse, came over. We filmed a sketch for his channel. That, that's actually very funny. I'm excited for that to come out. That'll come out in a couple of days. Which will be good. Man, I am... Um... Oh, this is what I want to talk about. Guys, the lost episode of the podcast. 
the podcast that I filmed last week and then lost the SD card, I am convinced, I'm going to my girl's house after this, I'm convinced that it's somewhere on the floor. I'm pretty sure that I can find this lost episode. But now, we have a lost episode that was supposed to be up yesterday. It's a very good episode, actually. Jazz is in it. She was there. She popped up. I talked about uh, sushi making you racist. That was pretty funny. And then we argued for ages about 3D gravity and whether or not that could exist. (laughs) And this lost episode, if I can find it, what do I do with it? Do I upload it as a bonus episode? Do I delete it because it's no longer relevant? Do I do two podcasts in a week? Do I upload that instead of doing a podcast next week? Do I give it to the Patreon supporters? What the fuck do I do with this lost episode? I don't know what to do with it. If I can find it, I haven't fucking found it. But if I can, guys, very important. What the fuck do I do with the lost episode of the Speared Sunnies podcast? Let me know. I need to know. It's a fucking mystery. Do I shove it up my... No, I won't. Do I shove it up your... (laughs) No, I won't. Um, Man, I was supposed to get a video up tonight. And you know what? It's too hot. It's too hot. I I gave up. I tried. I was like, oh, I'll be able to do Christmas and uh, all of that shit and still do a video. Nah, having the week off. That's it. I have gave up. I was like, I could get it up tonight. It's filmed. It's all filmed. I filmed it last night at fucking 9 p.m. in the warehouse, sweating my tits off. I think I probably got the reddest face of all time. And I was like, oh, I'll edit it tomorrow. And then I got to the warehouse and it was fucking 37 degrees outside, 50 degrees in the fucking tin shithole that is the warehouse, 60 degrees inside my fucking jeans. And I was like, you know what? I, my brain doesn't work. I can't edit. So I think I'll just put that up next week, get it up nice and early for the Patreon people instead of fucking scrambling and rushing and all that kind of shit. Man, I'm telling you, dude, 2019, 2019 is the year of the big boy. (laughs) I've been smashing the gym, dude. I've been going. I've been doing it. Everything. You know what? You know what it is? Every single thing that I said I would do this year is actually going to happen next year. That's what I've realized. It just took me a year of going, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm getting ready to do that. Or I'm going to upload a video every week. I'm going to go to gym five days a week. I'm never going to miss another episode of the podcast. And then I just, all of 2018, I did that fucking every week. (laughs) Late podcast, didn't do videos, skipped the fucking gym. But you know what, dude? 2019, it's fucking happening because I don't have all this other shit happening. I'm not even organizing my tour this year, next year. It's great. So it's good, man. I feel like all, all the shit that I that I want, all of the like the background shit that I want, like going just being fit, eating properly, staying consistent with the podcast and the videos, just all that background shit that should just be running. I feel like I'm totally in the in the space and have the time to be doing that. And I think I underestimated how much time that actually fucking takes. Uh, so that when I piled on all these new things, it just became impossible. So it's all good, man. 2019, the year I actually fucking do shit. My channel's been going nuts, man. We've gone up, gone up uh, 8,000 subscribers in these last three weeks, which is sick, man. And uh, all of the videos are going nuts. It's really good. Every single video I upload seems to be getting more views in the same time period than the last one, uh, aside from that, uh, that viral sketch, uh, which is awesome. So it's all, it's all fucking happening, and the, the next video is fucking very, very funny, man. It's very funny. I just uh, couldn't be fucked editing it. The editor had had a week off, and I was like, oh, I don't want to do it. So I didn't do it. And and you know what? It was Christmas. Hey, suck my festive nuts. <laughs> All right. 
Man, I've actually been uh, getting a bit of fucking asthma uh, with the weather change. Speaking of, I need to find my inhaler. I'm going to be back. Ah! Just trying to find my inhaler. Is this it? Is this it? No, it's the horn again. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, hang on. That's the horn. Okay, coming back. And inhale. Alright? I'm getting a bit of asthma. It's weird. When, whenever the fucking weather changes like this, I always get... Always get it. Um, now, I've been going to the gym quite a lot. I've already put on three kilos, which is good. But, you know, I fucking... It's just because there's three kilos that I lost. So, it's like... it's not. I haven't made any fucking progress. Although, my neck is looking huge, dude. Evidently, by all the fucking comments that I'm getting. Um, what else do we want to talk about here? What have we got? Oh, I watched this thing on, um, watch this thing on TV. My mum's obsessed. <coughs> Sorry, I'm still a bit sick. <coughs> Sorry. My mum's, uh, obsessed with those fucking crime shows. I feel like every mum is obsessed with, like, crime and true crime and murder. And it's like, I feel like there's, there's just, you know what? There's a little bit inside every housewife that just wants to stab the fuck out of their husband, abandon the kids and, you know, live life as a prostitute in Peru or something. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that's what my mum wants to do. I'm just saying that that's what your mum wants to do. <laughs> Look, my mum's obsessed with those fucking true crime things she's always watching. I don't know why she watches. Like, I, I walk down the hallway and she's got it on TV and she's either watching Real Housewives, which I actually can bear because at least that's a little bit funny watching fucking 40-year-old rich cunts pull each other's hair out. That's great. Love that. I'm all about that. But when I walk past the fucking... the hallway, walk past the living room and I just hear the TV. So it's like, I get like three seconds of, of, of dialogue when I walk past the door. So you hear it and it's just like... Like, if she's watching Real Housewives, I'll walk past the door and they'll be like, Are you fucking bitch? That's, that's kind of all I hear. I can't believe you slept with my husband! That's all you kind of hear. But, but it's like 50% of the time, it's like, I can't believe you've done this to my family! You know? Like that Real Housewives drama shit. You say that to my face, you bitch! Every time I walk past. But the other 50% of the time, uh, you'll just hear like some real morbid true crime shit like interviews with the victim's family is like oh he killed my three year old daughter and I'll be like oh that ruined my day I just got up you know I'm trying to I'm trying to fucking brush my teeth and now I'm thinking about a three year old rape victim getting murdered and left in a bin somewhere it's like hey dude do we really do we really does that really need to be a fucking fair enough let's have a TV series do we need a channel I don't think so <coughs> I don't think we need a channel dedicated to fucking rape and murder. Every, every fucking week, there's a new one that's on. Mum's watching something about some woman who got choked out to death in a fucking park by some crazy cunt. Or some dude getting stabbed by a random attack. Or some dude who tried to smuggle fucking cocaine in his anus and ended up doing 40 years. Surrounded by fucking Indonesian rapists, you know? Just in a cell. And then he gets out, turns out he was falsely convicted and all he gets is like fucking $3,000 to do an interview for crime TV. Not a good trade-off, dude. <laughs> um, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, so anyway, I was doing my hair and as you guys know, it's a process. So I'm doing my hair in the fucking living room while mum watches this depressing shit and it was about this, this fucking, this dude who lived in like a gang area, young black dude, probably my age. And, uh, basically it was at the end of the show and it got down to the confession, uh, stage of the investigation. So they got this guy in the fucking confession, the interview room or whatever. And this dude's talking to this police officer and the police officer's being real nice. And he's like, come on, son, you can tell me. Uh, you did you did whatever you had to do and the guy basically gets down to he's like broken down and he's crying it's really fucking sad and he goes oh I was I thought I was trying to I was trying to buy drugs off this guy in a car and then he moved his hand down to get a gun to rob me so I pulled out my gun and I shot him because I wasn't about to get shot you know I wasn't gonna let him shoot me I shot him first and and he and he killed him and he's then he just starts
starts crying. He's like, oh, just let me go home. It was like fucking heartbreaking shit. And the cop was being really nice, like consoling him, being like, it's all right, man. It's okay. You did what you had to do. Patting him on the back, gives him a hug. Really nice, sweet stuff, right? Got the confession and, and took it well and, and was just a really nice person. And then uh, the police officer, he gets up and he goes, I'm going to get you a glass of water, okay? And he's like, okay. <laughs> he's like fucking in hysterics, the dude, right? And this, this, this wonderful, beautiful police officer, this, he, he stands up, the honorable man he is, to get the guy a glass of water, even though he killed someone. And he leaves the, the interrogation room and he shuts the door. And there's four other police officers waiting outside the soundproof door. And he just looks at them and he goes, Hey, we fucking got him! Yeah! And they all just start celebrating. Like, hey, we got the confession! We got the confession! And this dude's just fucking bawling his eyes out. And these guys are having a fucking celebration going, Yeah, we fucking got him! Who's the fucking best? The cops are the best! Who's the fucking best? Cops, cops, cops! USA! USA! And like really celebrating after this dude just fucking lied to the guy for like what what would have been three hours. It's all right, man. I'm your friend. I'm here for you. And then he gets the confession. And he's like, "Woo! Fuck that cunt. Thirty years in prison." And it just got me thinking, like, dude, if that's how excited they are to get like a genuine heartbreaking confession out of a young person who fucked up, you know for sure. They're getting confessions and, and shit out of people who didn't do it. You know what I mean? You know that shit happens. Just, if you whisper in my ear that you're the one who killed her in the park, I'll let you go. You'll let me go? Yeah. All you gotta do is whisper in my ear and don't mind the tape recorder. I'm about to turn it on. Just you just gotta whisper it in my just whisper it in your ear and I can go home. I didn't do it. You just gotta whisper it in my ear, man. Just gotta hang on. It's like playing. That's I mean recording. Okay. I did it. Can I go home now? Don't worry, man. You can go home. I'm just gonna get you a glass of water. And he stands up and he leaves. He goes, I wanna go home! I'm just gonna get you a glass of water. We fucking got him! Cops are the best! 30 years in prison! Just celebrating with all the fucking boys out back. False confession! False confession! Ooh, ooh, ooh! <laughs> you know that shit happens. I don't know, man. Should you, should you be that excited? I mean, I guess. What the fuck do I know criticizing the police force? I don't know, I just, I don't, it just felt a little bit morbid to me that, that this dude's like fucking bawling his eyes out after he's confessed to, to killing a fellow human in what is arguably a self-defense situation. Uh, and then the cops are just like, we got another one! Free labor for the private prisons! <laughs> another slave for the industrial complex! Ooh, 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 cops, 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 cops! <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck man Christmas was good dude after I trashed Christmas so much Christmas was fucking good I hope you guys had, had a good one as well and uh, I guess I won't speak to you before the new year so I hope you guys all have a fucking awesome new year as well hey I'll talk about Christmas and then I got some fucking tips for new years uh, Christmas was good dude I only saw one cousin that's enough this is my Christmas. Mum, dad, grandma, uncle, cousin, cousin's girlfriend. Oh, brother, and then brother's girlfriend. That's it. So good. What is that, fucking 10 cunts? That's all you need, man. And I saw my girl. That's all you fucking need. 10 cunts. Gifts back and forth. Sit out in the backyard for three hours. Have some food. Everyone else has a couple of drinks. I sip on a fucking Coke Zero. Huh? So I'm trying to cut out sugar from my life because it's no good for you. So I have my fucking Coke Zero, like an anorexic nine-year-old. Do you want a Corona? No, I want a Coke Zero. I want a Coke Zero because I'm nine and I, and I think I'm fat. I've got body dysmorphia. Thank you for the offer though. I 
I drink Corona, I just fuck, I just drink Coke Zero and vomit in the toilet. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Right? Three hours in the fucking backyard, eat your food, turkey, salad. Say, salad. You guys are fucking it up. Salad dressing destroys salad. Here's what you do. You get your fucking salad, all your lettuce, all that shit, put a bit of lemon on it, a bit of fucking some sauce that doesn't have sugar in it, and then avocado, dude. That's all you need. You want your fucking lettuce and all your greens, and then you put squeeze lemon on it, and then you squeeze tomato juice on it. And then you put avocado in that motherfucker, and it's the best salad you've ever had. I'm sick of getting a fucking salad and it just tastes like chlorine. You know those? It's like, oh, it tastes like a fucking public pool with crunch. Just like a public pool, only crunchy. <laughs> it's fucked, man. But yeah, my Christmas was good. Um, you know, three hours out in the backyard talking to all the family and then... Go, go to my room, play a bit of World of Warcraft, be a fucking virgin. That's what I did. And my mum comes up, she goes, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm playing World of Warcraft like a fucking virgin, trying to get to level 120 before the Christmas period ends. Oh, fuck, that's Monday. I need to do that. It's on my, on my list of priorities. <laughs> I'm such a fucking antisocial virgin. I love it. I'm really living my best life, man. Hey. I nailed. I also nailed gifts this year. So what I got my girl. We went to we went to Southland, which is a big shopping center, and uh, she was looking at these rings, looking at this jeweler, and she had two rings. She couldn't decide. Nice silver rings. She loves rings and jewelry like I do, right? <clears throat> she she pulls me over. She goes, oh, oh, I like these both. I don't know which one to choose. I don't know which one to choose. How about you choose for me? And I was like, all right, I'll choose for you. And then I told her, to fuck off. I said, go over there. And then she walked away. And then I looked at the I looked at the chick behind the counter. And she was like, oh my God, what a good boyfriend. She's buying jewelry. Oh my God, that's so romantic for Christmas. Buying him he's buying his girlfriend jewelry from a fucking from a fucking kiosk in a shopping center. That's so romantic. Oh, I wish I had a man. I'm lonely, but I work in a kiosk. Oh. Right? And I looked at the girl and I was like, wrap up. Both of them. Wrap up both of those fucking rings for me. She's like, both? And I said, fucking both. And don't you tell my girl that I got two of them. Both. Two rings. That's what I got. That's what she got for Christmas. She got two rings. Huh? You thought two phones was gone? No, sir. Two rings. I like them both, bitch, I don't want to choose. However that fucking uh, retired Nicki Minaj song goes. <laughs> Is that her name? What's her name? Fucking disabled Minaj. Uh, Cardi B. Cardi should be in a home. That chick who keeps fucking singing in, in Spanish or whatever in her songs. Hey, pick one language. I don't need two languages in, in a song. One language... Make a Spanish song, fine. Don't, but don't have any English in that motherfucker. Right? Make an English song, cool. Don't have any Spanish in there. Simple. You want to attract two markets? Do it at different times, not at the same time. I'm sick of this fucking... I posted that little rant of me going off against uh, music that was bilingual and all these people were like, oh, what's your problem? You can't speak Spanish? It's like, no, that's my problem. I can't speak Spanish. Don't put it in my English music. Put it in your Spanish music. If you want to attract a Spanish audience, you know what? I bet the Spaniards hate that shit too. When some fucking Spanish cunt just starts singing in Spanish and all of a sudden he starts singing in broken accented English. I bet they all go, oh, he's just trying to attract the English market. What, we us, us Spaniards aren't good enough for you? Dios mio, whatever the fuck they say. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, man. Stick to one fucking language but don't stick to, to one ring if you can if you can help it 
And then uh, my girl, she got me uh, a fucking uh, a project box <clears throat> from Games Workshop to keep all of my paints and brushes and glue and tools in. And it's so good, man. It's the fucking... I needed it so much because it was just permanently on my desk even when I was not painting. And it would just sit there looking sad. Paint me. It would make me feel sad. And, and it would take up so much space on the desk. But now I can just pack it all into a fucking box, all the paints, because I've got like 60 different colors and shit and, and like 12 different brushes and tools and so much fucking garbage just to paint toy soldiers like a virgin. Uh, but now I can pack it all nicely into a box and then it can sit on my shelf and I'll never fucking open it again. <laughs> no, I will. It's just good to be able to pack it away. Otherwise, it's just there permanently reminding everyone who comes into your room how, how much of a fucking virgin loser you are. <clears throat> Alright, what else did I want to talk I've run out of shit to say I'm so fucking hot, man Oh, news, New Year's Eve, man New Year's Eve Don't do anything for New Year's Eve If you want to enjoy New Year's Don't do anything Fuck that shit, man You don't want to You don't want to organize anything to do on New Year's. The moment you organize to have a good New Year's, you fucked it. Here's how you do New Year's Eve. Friends, backyard. Friends, camping. Friends, beach. That's it. Don't go to a fucking New Year's Eve nightclub. Me and my girl did that. We almost left before midnight about six times. Don't go to the fucking city, okay? You're just going to get crushed by the thousands of people there, and you'll probably catch a couple of nails from the insane terrorist cunt that'll probably try and shoot it up, right? You don't need to do... Don't put that pressure on yourself. The fireworks, not that good. Watch it on TV. So much better, okay? Beach, backyard, park, maybe, or at home alone. Crying. Because I can guarantee you, sitting at home crying because you didn't get invited anywhere, way better than going to a fucking New Year's Eve nightclub party where they, no shit, me and Jazz did that, we went to a fucking New Year's Eve nightclub party, I'm pretty sure I complain about it every time New Year's comes on, they had a fucking real housewife of Melbourne just rock up, and they go, no, it's fucking slutty McHawbag from the real housewives of Melbourne, and she got up and she was like, ah, I'm 40 but I look 80 because I've had too much cum. <laughs> and then everyone was like oh who, who the fuck cares about this chick no one did everyone just ignored her she was like eh, I need more cum to sustain me I've become addicted I'm cum reliant you see those chicks though man you see them around you know those like 40 year old women who look like they're 55 because they've had too much cum they exist you know what a, what a fucking disgusting thing to say. But hey, man, you see them. They're always driving that BMW drop top that you know they didn't buy, you know? <laughs> some other wealth, some, el some wealthy dude bought it for them and they drive it around with their fucking Louis Vuitton bag and their hair done, contributing nothing and sucking everything. Oh, Merry Christmas, guys! Hey, bit of fucking abject sexism for your Christmas holiday season. What's in the news? I've run out of things to say. This is when I get desperate when I go on the fucking news. I think I need to uninstall that fucking Apple News app from my phone because it just sends me alerts about just, oh, breaking news. Fucking three people died in a horrible way. And then 20 minutes later, oh, also there was a terrorist attack in Bogota or whatever, whatever the fuck. It's like, it just, it's just like, why can't it, why can't they just be like, breaking news, you know? Turns out we fucking helped a bunch of people. Breaking news, someone donated this much money to charity. Breaking news, here's a dog, you know, getting his head rubbed. Why don't we have happy news? Everything's fucking, oh, impeach Trump and the fucking, here's, an, here's a story about 30 people dying. Ridiculous, man. Um, okay, looking at the news. Oh, let's see what uh, Google News recommends for me, right? News for me. Meghan Markle. Ah, oh, fuck off! I don't care about these fucking royals. Why 
Why this Gen Y caved and bought a house in Sydney? Probably because he got inheritance from his fucking parents. Dude, I bet. I'm going to go through this story. If he doesn't get inheritance by his parents, I'll eat my dick on stream. I won't because, you know, I could be wrong. All right. You know they always fucking mention it at the back end of the fucking article too. <clears throat> Where are we? You know what, guys? I've decided that I don't have the attention span to read this article and be entertaining. Dude, this story fucking made me laugh even though it shouldn't. Walmart Santa charged with murder of children buried in his backyard. And just the guy... If you take one look at the photo that they took of this guy, the Walmart Santa, if this dude, if you own a fucking Walmart and this guy walked in applying for the job as Santa, you should 100% report that guy to child services just based off how he looks and what he's wearing. He's wearing a fucking flannel t-shirt and he's got the look of a guy who has two kids buried in his fucking backyard. That's what he looks like. Like, like even the mugshot that they took of him, that expression says, ah, you didn't check the front yard, did you? There's a couple of animals and a few women in there. Why do you think I've got such a good vegetable garden? That's what his fucking expression says. If, that's, if that guy walked... Dude, that guy can't be a Santa. Clearly, he's murdering children and burying them in his backyard. But even beyond that, even if he was a nice person, he looks like he's got kids buried in the backyard. Maybe that's why kids always fucking cry when they see Santa, because they can sense how many children they've murdered. <laughs> No, I can sense the spirits of other infants on this man. Get him away from me. I hate his beard. How the fuck do you just have kids buried in your backyard anyway? Fourteen-year-old brother and sister who vanished two and a half years apart... What the fuck? So he grabbed one and then two and a half years later he was like, ah, I might as well finish the job. Fucking lazy cunt. <clears throat> That's crazy. What about... Oh, he had a fucking... Oh, he had a wife and they knew about it. That is... Cr oh, was it his kid? Oh, okay. Was it? Oh. Yeah, fuck. It was his children. Dude, how the fuck do you kill two of your own kids two and a half years apart and and the police not, like, just be a little bit sus? What the fuck, dude? So these kids just vanished. So this dude killed two of his own children two and a half years apart and no one was like, oh, maybe, maybe we should the fuck is this what is this this is dude i'm trying to read a story about children getting murdered and you're trying to sell me airplane tickets dude why the fuck does pewdiepie lose his advertising because he he says a fucking racial slur whereas the the news.com.au can advertise plane tickets and fucking shoes over the top of articles about actual legitimate murder of children fuck man crazy shit anyway I'm gonna stop talking about the fucking people murdering their children I'm just trying to find some bright and happy news here there's no happy news guys so why don't we go why don't we go to uh Miscellaneous bit of the end here, huh? I'm sorry these uh, podcasts have been short as of late, but uh, if if they re if they remain an hour, I will die of heat stroke. What do we have here? Do we have any fucking new ones? If you'd like to send an email in, I need some uh, I need some new questions and uh, and shit. Uh, send an email to podcast at loosespears.com. I'll keep you anonymous if you'd like me to. Um, just let me know. 
All right. Oh, here we go. Schoolies in Bali. <clears throat> hey, Lou. Oh, no, that's what I wanted to talk about before I do this. Uh, I think I've uh, I think I've discovered my uh, my ideal woman, man. I think I've discovered the ideal type of woman. Uh, I think, uh, guys, this is a big this is a big announcement to make, and I feel like I'm coming out of the closet here. But uh, I think I identify as someone who's sexually attracted to fit girls. I think, guys, and I'm not talking, I'm not talking, you know, Jen Selta, you know, outline of a six pack, nice ass, tiny shoulders, tiny arms. I'm talking like kind of jacked, not, not jacked, not bodybuilder, you know, that's too much and not like, not power lifter because that's just fat chicks in a leotard. I'm talking like fitness model you know like you'd see her on the cover of a fitness magazine i'm talking like six pack kind of big shoulders little bit of bicep action going on the type of girl it's the type of girl who here's the perfect way to explain it my ideal woman is the type of girl who could almost beat me in an arm wrestle. Like, it'd be really close, you know? Like, when when we sit down to arm wrestle and she gets her guns out and then I just get my regular man muscles out, everyone goes, oh, fuck. She's kind of... She's kind of jacked. She might win this. And then we arm wrestle and then... I start to win and then she really fights in and then I start to lose a little bit and then everyone goes, oh, and then I, I go, I can't let my girl beat me and then I, be- I beat her. I think that's my ideal woman, man. You know, who's, a, who's an example of it? I bet I fucking, I bet I follow 40,000 of them in, on Instagram. I actually don't really follow that fucking many hot chicks on Instagram because they're very, they're very boring. I don't know. I don't know any fucking names. I'm just saying. You know. If they look like they could almost beat me in an arm wrestle, I'm in love. It's definitely they they're not they're not bodybuilders, but they definitely go to gym 5 days a week and they're not a, they're not afraid of lifting, you know? They do the bench press. They'll do the fucking shoulder press, you know? They'll deadlift. That's that I think that's what it is, man. Is she could almost beat me in an arm wrestle and she could definitely beat me in a running race, you know? And in a wrestling scenario, she would come out on top 30% of the time only because I don't want to hurt her. <laughs> you know what? Ronda Rousey. You know she's got a bit of shoulders on her, some biceps. I'm into that. But but even then she was a bit she was a bit fucking strong. I'm talking fitness model. I don't know. I'm trying to think of like 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 a famous person who has that rig. I don't know. I don't really follow any of them. I'm just saying. I think that's 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 the ideal body, man. Someone who could almost beat me in a fucking arm wrestle. <laughs> and and you know what? They would, they would make all of my male friends feel a little bit insecure. Of, oh, fuck, this chick's got better arms than I do. Not jacked, but, you know, there. <laughs> so, you know, if you, could, if you could crush a watermelon with your thighs, fucking hit me up. <laughs> all right, what are we doing here? Miscellaneous bit. At the fucking end. Um, send an email to podcast at loosebeers.com. I am actually running low on these. I do need some more fucking emails. Um, school is in Bar- Bali. Hey, Lou, cunt listener here from Indonesia, Jakarta to be exact. And since you're a fucking Aussie, I think it's fair to ask if you've ever went to a schoolie and do you think me and my mates would enjoy it? 
where we live, we don't have any spring breaks, schoolies, or any of that shit. It's a pretty conservative community. But my circle of friends enjoy drinking, and it's a joke here that all bogan Aussies do in Bali is get drunk. Hey, dude, that's not a fucking joke. I've been to Bali, and that is all bogan Aussies do. They get pissed, and then they fuck your women. And then they get AIDS because they didn't wear a condom, and neither did any of the fucking 300,000 people before them. Uh... It's a joke here that all, bo- all, all bogan Aussies do in Bali is get drunk. That's not a joke. It will be kind of fun partying with other cunts about our age. Since next year, we're going to finish high school and-, and a ticket from Jakarta is dirt cheap. Would you recommend us come to one of these schoolies? What do Aussies think of us Indonesians? Since my dad is Canadian and my mum's a local, I'm a tall bloke who could still pass as a foreigner foreigner to Indonesia, but none of the other guys got those cunt white jeans. I love this, uh, I love this, uh, semi-broken English, but with cunt in it. You actually have very good English, but you're saying cunt in weird areas too much. What do you suggest? It's either that or stay here and celebrate with some video games and going to the movies. Anyway, I wish to attend one of your live shows if I ever go down under. Have a shit one, James. Um, look, I don't know, man. I feel like, uh, Oh, sorry. I got to text Jazz. Um, I feel like... Uh, I don't know. That's an interesting question. I've never been to schoolies on Bali, but from what I from what I see online, it looks very fucking rowdy and crazy. And I don't know if... I don't know if... Uh, if I mean, Australians... Here's the thing. Australians going to Bali are going with their friends, right? They would obviously be going with a a group of friends. So they would stick to their fucking friendship group unless they can, you know, fuck someone from from a different group, you know? So I don't know how... I don't know if you would make any friends on schoolies. I don't think you would have a bad time. But I don't think you'd particularly make any friends. Like if I'm... If I was flying to Indonesia with a bunch of my friends, like five of my friends, and we're doing schoolies, I would always be conscious of, oh, I need to stay safe, I need to stay with my friends, and I shouldn't really do anything that could get me in trouble. And if a group of Indonesian people my age from Indonesia came up and said, oh, we've got a party, come with us, I'd be like, nah, you're going you're gonna to rob me and take advantage of me. Because that would just be my fucking street smart. I've heard a million horror stories. But if I was, say, at a nightclub or something and you guys were there, I might be, I might be like, fuck yeah, I'm partying with the Indonesian locals. I think the key to this, if you want to have fun with the Aussies, is be honest. Tell them that you've never partied with Australians and you really want to party with Australians. And, and do what they're doing. Don't, don't try and take them away from something because you'll come off as strange or you people might think you're trying to take advantage of them. I would just be like, oh, my name's James. I really want to party with Australians. I've never done it before. I've just turned 18. Here are all of my friends. We're harmless. We just want to have a lot of fun and uh, we want to enjoy schoolies with you. What are you guys doing? And... Uh, I would be careful of racist Australians because uh, there are a couple and uh, when they get drunk, they get a little bit violent. I don't think it's all of us. I don't don't think it's even most of us. I think it's a tiny minority, but I definitely do think there'll be a couple in Bali for some reason. Oh, I fucking hate anyone who's not white. You know what I'd like to do? Go to a place where there's no fucking white cunts and then be racist there. Doesn't make any sense. I don't know why they do it, but they are there. Um... So yeah, man, I would just I would just be honest and be friendly, and uh, I don't know how well you seem like you speak good English. I mean, you can fucking write good English, so I imagine you can speak it well. <coughs> so just be honest and uh, have fun. And I would say, if you are hanging out with Australians, try and speak English to your friends. Don't just because that would weird me out if I was if just five Indonesian people started tagging along following me around and then they all started speaking I don't know what language you speak Indonesian or whatever I would be like oh are they organizing something or or what's going on I just it would weird me out 
So I would say, speak English, uh, be honest, say you just want to hang out with Aussies, and uh, just be fun and be harmless and uh, have fun. And don't get too drunk because that's uh, dangerous no matter where you are. <coughs> I've got this fucking awful cold. Um, all right, guys. Uh, I think that's the end of the podcast. Thank you very much for, for listening and watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, these ones uh, in future are going to be a bit longer. I've just been uh, really swamped with the uh, with the Christmas season. i got a new video coming up uh, in the next couple of days. It's all filmed and ready to go. And, oh, I also have a, I have a uh, Christmas or end of year special coming up. And I love doing these every year because I get to go through all of the awesome shit and... Uh, my favorite moments of the year. So please do let me know your favorite moments from this year. I really want to know them, whether they're the funniest part of a video that I did, uh, uh, something cool that I did, like the comedy special or the tour or or a funny moment or anything you think that I might forget. I'm just going through them, all of the stuff that's happened in 2018. It's been like my biggest year career-wise. Um, and, uh, there's a lot of shit to think of. So please do let me know what I should include in the, uh, the end of year special. I'm going to do things a little bit differently rather than just cutting up a montage. I'm going to do, try and do something a little bit special. Uh, so, uh, let me know what you guys want to see, what you guys think were my best moments or, or cool things or great achievements or funny shit that I did. Uh, even if it's just a segment from a video, uh, a clip from a YouTube thing I did or, or a clip from this podcast. I do want to hear it or the radio show or anything that I've done. So uh, let me know and uh, thank you for listening. I'll see you next Sunday. Please do consider supporting me on Patreon. It really, really does help uh, me give a, me have a budget to fucking pay the editor and all that kind of stuff. He's coming back in next week so videos will come out. Uh, and uh, yeah, 2019 is going to be fucking awesome, guys. I'm going to go over my New Year's, New Year's resolutions next episode. I know I said I would do it this, this episode, but I forgot my book at home. I'm going to do it next episode, and uh, we'll see. All right? Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Rate me on iTunes, Patreon, all that kind of shit. Uh, thank you. Merry Christmas. Have a good 2019. Be safe on New Year's Eve, uh, and uh, um, have a shit one. You cunts.